All right, do you want me to get to the Brad Holmes thing that Kang thinks is a stretch? Yes. Let's all judge Doug. Is it a stretch or not? 248-539-9797. What okay. do you got? So you have to have a plan, right? You've got a plan, but you also have to have a backup plan, right? Sure. When it like when it pertains to the draft. They go into the draft with a plan. Yep. And what do you think the original plan was with their pick at five or six? Or at, at six was yeah. a draft w- Witherspoon. Yeah. The defensive back. And he was off the board. He was taken at the five. Yep. So they went to plan B. Plan B. Have you seen what Witherspoon's doing? No. But I do. Uh, I've seen him play. I've seen high, I, a, a couple of games where they, you know, watching on red zone. And he's, he's making plays. He looks really good from what I saw. According to Pro Football Focus, this is data. It's not like their grades. He's been in single coverage a bunch this year. There's been 16 times they've thrown at him in single coverage. Witherspoon. He's allowed three catches. He's forced seven incompletions. The opposing quarterback, when throwing at Devin Witherspoon in single coverage, their QB rating is 39.6. CBS came out with the rating for the rookies. At the first round rookies, they ranked them one to thirty-one. There were only thirty-one taken this year. Devin Witherspoon ranks third as the third best rookie in the class. So I'm going to give Brad Holmes credit that his plan A would have worked, and by the way, would have helped the struggling defense. And his plan B <laughs> is also working. I don't know what more you need to know. <laughs> Get him the gold jacket. Let's go. Um. <laughs> yes, gang. Do I think he's reaching a bit to, to give him yeah, credit? Yeah, what, do you, what do you think? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> um, maybe you want to give the does Pete Carroll get credit for for taking him at five? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Well, he actually drafted the guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we all went into this, and I think. Was Devin Witherspoon the number one guy that Lions fans wanted? To, well, I guess Witherspoon or Carter, right? Those were the two guys that we we all kind of looked at and said, draft that guy. I think it's a reach. Do you? Yeah. I think he was doing a smart thing. That's who you identify, absolutely. And then you got to pivot, and you're likely going to have to pivot. And they did. And do I like the pivot? Yeah, I like the pivot. I like that they got draft capital. They traded back a little bit. Um, I probably would not have taken uh, Jameer Gibbs at 12. I don't know if Jameer Gibbs would have gone in the first round had the Lions not taken him. I have no idea. Looks pretty good, though, right now, doesn't he? Yeah, I like well, I like him as a player. Oh, my God. So let's say Brad Holmes one day makes the Let's get the fame. diffuser out there. Yeah, and think- Let's get the sense. You know, what do we got here? You know. Pumpkin spice is still uh, still a thing right now. Got that through. Uh, you go pumpkin spice through Thanksgiving. Just saying, his plan A also would have worked. His plan B is working. Well, Draft Ninja. There's a lot to unpack here. One, I can't believe you use pro football focus. You hate pro football focus. It was just straight data. It wasn't any rating. They weren't grading anything. They just went with the straight data. Two... You're giving okay. So if Brad Holmes makes the Hall of Fame one day. He goes up there and gets his gold jacket and all this stuff, right? Brad Holmes, like it just contributions to football, and they read off his resume. I'm free that day. Yeah, yeah, yeah we know. Okay, we, we yeah. yeah, obviously. They're gonna read off like uh, you know he drafted Jameer Gibbs. He drafted you know whoever. Look, read off the list of Hall of Famers, Pro Bowl players he drafted. They're not also gonna say he would have also drafted. Like it's not <laughs> really a list for that. Like what is it? <laughs> no, that's, that's, for, that's, for, that's for the introductory uh, speech I, by Doug when Doug's introducing right. him. And Doug know. goes, back in 2023, Brad Holmes had to pivot. <laughs> he knew that the other gentleman up here on the dais, and congratulations, Devin, for being a Hall of Famer. <laughs> right. He knew then that Witherspoon was going to be a Hall of Famer. He was going to take him at six, but he had to pivot because Seattle took him. And he spun that into two Hall of Famers, Jameer Gibbs and Sam Laporta. Now that's where you give the man credit, the pivot. The, to do what, what else he's got to make a move or change. The, I would have drafted this guy. Ah, you're reaching, man. I'm just deconstructing what happened okay. 
in an in-depth analysis, and you guys don't want to think that hard. Here's why I don't want to think that hard. Once they did make that pivot and they make the trade, the <laughs> amount of trades that took place after that with the Lions, I can't even piece it together to see who they would have had who they wouldn't have had. <laughs> Right? Yeah. Because all the Broderick Martin shuffling around, the shuffling around to get Hendon Hooker. Here's a Minnesota pick thrown in. I don't even know what it was. And nobody knows who would have been taken if Laporta still would have been there. You know, Brian Branch is the one that I feel like that's who they got. Like, because I think Brian Branch was going to go. And the Lions were fortunate that he was still there when they took the, when they took the pick in the second round. 